So thank you everyone um, for jumping on the call today. We have Joe and Ryan um, with Friends of Cancer Research, and they are going to be presenting on the portal, the set of the module set that they've designed um, to to go over the FDA and and its role in the advocacy world. Um, so I will let them do proper introductions and thank you both again for joining us and for giving our advocates access to this this really great module. Thanks, Reese. Appreciate it. Uh, this is Ryan Homan. I'm Vice President here at Friends of Cancer Research. Uh, I'm here with my colleague, Joe Patterson, um, who has taken the lead on what we'll be showing you today uh, for our team here at Friends, which is progressforpatients.org. Uh, just a quick little bit about Friends of Cancer Research. We are an organization based in Washington for over 20 years and have taken the lead within the cancer advocacy space of focusing on the FDA in the regulatory space, um, fully acknowledging that there's been uh, a ton of fantastic organizations like, like Fight for Colorectal Cancer focusing on uh, the research component and the funding. And I know uh, a lot of individuals uh, from Fight CRC are up on the Hill and at their local levels uh, really advocating for science and funding for the National Institute of Health and related programs. Um, but what we were seeing and what's happening more and more in, in the field, as you all know, uh, there's exciting new advances happening at a very rapid pace. And a, the piece of that puzzle that's so important and more important than ever is the regulatory component, the Food and Drug Administration, and how that agency interacts with all of the exciting science that's going on at the institutions all across the, the country and all the research that it needs to get from the bench to the bedside. Uh, so about a year and a half ago, we launched progressforpatients.org, uh, and the idea behind the advocacy education initiative was that we know that different people, patients, caregivers, uh, advocates uh, on their own are very interested in the drug development process. We understand that it, it's somewhat of a black box and, and was difficult to understand, and we at Friends of Cancer Research we're on an ad hoc basis kind of uh, educating some groups about the, the ideas and the, the issues that uh, the FDA faces. Well, over the past few years, uh, and you've, you might have heard of pieces of legislation like 21st Century Cures um, or the reauthorization of the FDA uh, that happens every few years, uh, requires now a lot of aspects of the drug development process to have a patient uh, involved in the process. And patient engagement is now not, not only uh, kind of a token seat at the table, but a, more, a very powerful seat uh, that is now required at a lot of the tables uh, that are making decisions about how clinical trials are conducted, what clinical trials are conducted, and the direction of science. So there's, there's never been a, a better time for patients and a, and a higher need for patients to be involved in the FDA and in the regulatory and clinical trial development process. So what, what you're going to see today is what we created through progresspatients.org, which is an online learning platform to allow patients, caregivers, advocates uh, to go from a baseline or minimal understanding of the regulatory process the whole way through so that you have a solid understanding, not only for your own personal knowledge, uh, but if you are uh, you know, advocating on the Hill or have the opportunity to uh, be asked about uh, information regarding a clinical trial, or are even involved in some of the FDA programs that we'll talk about a little later and some of the programs at pharmaceutical companies that are really seeking patient input to better design the trials so that patients like you and your those you your loved ones are um, able to really uh, give their input in the process. <clears throat> so here are the what you see on the screen are education course objectives. I've gone over a lot of them. Um, what what this baseline knowledge goal will be able to teach you um, will be applicable in many ways. But what I want to say at the out, outset is. When you, after this call, you'll be given the opportunity to log in to progressforpatients.org uh, and 
and just look around and see if this is something, a course you'd like to take. And from the onset, the goal could be a multiple um, a variety of things. If you want to take this course just for your own personal knowledge, um, as you want to better understand the whole process in developing new therapies uh, for cancer patients, fantastic. Uh, this, is a, this is a free public service provided by Friends of Cancer Research. Um, you also have the opportunity when you log in, and we'll show this, um, to create a profile that lets us know that you want to be further engaged um, and potentially later on be matched up with other opportunities uh, where companies or the FDA might seek input. And then obviously, by colorectal cancer, you all have an incredible training program already that you all are going through that are, is preparing you to be advocates for colorectal cancer research across this country. And we really think that by you going through this course, you'll have an even better uh, and stronger understanding of not only the process, but start to spark some ideas and how you think uh, some of the processes that maybe you've been through as a patient or as a caregiver uh, could be improved that would increase clinical trial participation or just make uh, treatment and therapy options better for patients. So after the completion, obviously, we talked about this. Um, we'll, we'll go into at the end. Um, one of the tools that we'd like to provide for patients that want to is uh, for the ability for us to help, help you uh, learn when and where you can add your voice. Um, and, and this has ran the gamut. We, we at Friends of Cancer Research, uh, as an advocacy organization, are oftentimes seeking out advocates uh, like colorectal cancer advocates um, your founder, Nancy Roche, has, is, a, is a very, very active uh, partner here at Friends of Cancer Research, as is your president, Andrew Davis, and Reese on the phone. Um, we have advocates all the time that participate in our work in groups that we seek out from through this program uh, to sit on panels, to participate in uh, white paper authorships um, that delve into some of the, the most uh, promising issues that face cancer research. So the login here, um, you'll see this page is your landing page. And uh, I'm going to turn it over to my colleague, Joe, who will walk through just to give you a glimpse of what uh, progressforpatients.org looks like. Um, it is a self-guided online le learning platform. So once you create that profile and sign in, there's no pressure to uh, get any of this accomplished within a certain time frame. We understand that people learn at different paces. People have different time uh, that they can contribute to this. We found some patients and advocates like to sit down and do it all in one, one sitting. We found the average to get through all four courses is about 90 minutes. Um, so you, once you log in, um, you can start and stop and return whenever you want. So we want to make we wanted to make this as easy to use as possible. Um, so I'll turn it over to my colleague, Joe, to walk you through uh, what the course actually looks like. Thanks, Ryan. Um, hi, everyone. This is Joe Patterson at Friends of Cancer Research. Uh, so we just kind of walked you through uh, some of the reasons why we created the course and what you'll be learning. Now we'd like to show you how you'll be logging in, process there, um, and just give you an idea of what it'll look like as you go through the course. So can everyone see our screen right now? Yes. Yeah. OK, great. OK, awesome. Um, so like Ryan said, this is our homepage for the course. is on progressforpatients.org. Um, so after this uh, webinar, uh, Reese and everyone at Fat Collectural Cancer will be sending out um, a login information for everyone on the phone. Um, that will give you a self-sign-up code where you'll be able to put in your username, create a password, um, create a profile for yourself on um, our learning management site, Litmos. So if you were to, basically, if you were to request access from here, you'd click on our advocacy education page, um, and you'd put in your information here and let us know you're interested in taking the course. Um, since everyone here is interested in taking it, um, you'll go to your sign-in page once you create it with that self-sign-up code. Um, that email from Reese will also have some information about um, 
you know, general best practices for taking the course as you progress through and a glossary of terms. So as you go through and learn different terminology on the drug development process, you'll be able to go back and say, hey, what, is, what did that mean? I remember hearing that before, but I, I, I have trouble navigating. It'll all be right there for you to take, take a look through. So once you sign in, you'll be taken to your uh, homepage here. So this is what it'll look like uh, when you sign in. Uh, you can see here, Joe Patterson, um, and the best place to find your course, it should appear um, right here on your learner homepage. It'll be, it's titled An Introduction to the FDA and the Regulatory Environment for Drug Development. As you can see, I've been a very good course taker and have completed 100% of the course, um, but now we're going to take you through and show you what it'll look like once you log in. So here you're, we find ourselves on the main menu. Um, like we said, it's all self-guided. So uh, no matter where you enter, no matter where you leave off, um, it will remember your place. And once you come back and have time to take it, you'll be able to do that. So the first module of the course is titled the FDA 101. It's all about the Food and Drug Administration. This will give you a good intro um, as you go through the course. As you can see, um, it's interactive. You have arrows on both sides to progress through. Once you go through a whole page, click on any links you see, uh, any additional information, and you feel comfortable with the material, you'll click that arrow to move on to the right, and you'll move on to the course. Um, we have different pop-ups here that show you what you'll be learning. You just want to X out of those as they come up. Um, as you go through, you'll come across some glowing um, boxes. If you see that, that's an opportunity for you to click, learn more information, like on this slide, which shows uh, misconceptions about FDA. Once you go through, click through everything. Again, as long as you feel comfortable with the information, you feel like you don't need to go back and read through, you just go on to the next slide. As you can see, it's pretty interactive as you go through. A lot of information that pop up, pops up for you. Um, one thing to keep in mind as you go through, I mentioned that we're providing a glossary. Um, here on the left-hand side, you can also access the glossary for yourself. So you can just click on this, scroll through any type of information you come across, um, and it'll show you the definition. Um, so once you get to the end of the module, um, here will be an here is an example where if you don't click through, you won't be able to continue through. We have some uh, multiple choice quizzes uh, for everyone to take. These are not meant to be um, too difficult for anyone to complete. They're mostly meant to just reinforce information, provide your yourself with a little test when you get to the end. Um, so you feel like you're learning the material. Um, if you if you get it right, fantastic. It'll take you on to the next question. But say, for instance, you get it wrong, give you another try. If you get it incorrect again, we'll tell you what the correct response is. You'll still be able to move on um, to the next module, to the next quiz question, and there won't be any issues there. Um, again, this... Uh, we have a main menu that will be available for you to click back to. Um, once you go through a section, you can click back. You say, hey, I forgot what that was. You can click back to see what is the FDA. There's your answer to that question that we just went through. Um, and like we said, you can take this at your own pace, um, move through it as you see fit. Uh, like Ryan mentioned, overall, we've seen it takes people about an hour and a half to get through it. Um, but, you know, work through it as you can. Um, so now uh, I'm going to turn it back over to Ryan. We're going to continue to show you the course as we move through it. Um, he'll catch anything I missed, and um, and we'll we'll be ready to go. Ryan. Uh, thanks. Um, you'll see Joe clicking through on on the screen, and I just want to you know reiterate like the, the goal of this is whatever this um, this amount of information would be beneficial to each of you, and that might be different on on all levels. So don't be uh, intimidated by any sort of expectation at the other end of this. I know uh, your team there at Fight Colorectal Cancer uh, and Friends of Cancer Research has been partnering on this. This is the second year, and 
Um, I know some of your uh, fellow advocates there at Pike Colorectal Cancer have found this really beneficial and helpful. So we just wanted to and are very uh, proud to partner again with Pike Colorectal Cancer on this. Um, as Joe goes through, what you're seeing filling out on the screen is, is part of uh, one of the modules on uh, the clinical trials process. And you'll see how, how the whole drug discovery and clinical trial process through FDA review and approval uh, comes about. And within each of those bars that you see there um, are really opportunities where patients can be involved um, at different points in the process. And there's more and more of these opportunities becoming available um, as pa patient input is, is institutionalized, as I spoke to before. Um, I'll pause there. I know we've gone through a lot um, just to see if there are any questions on the phone about the modules. Uh, the FDA itself, the process, or any of uh, any other questions you may have. Thank you both so far. This has been very helpful. Um, for those on the phone, um, how long, so let's say an advocate completes the portal, how long do they have access to the portal or the modules after completing the entire process? Is it something where it's just open from then on out as long as they have their login? Yes. Um, if, they com if anyone completes the course, you can log back in and go through the material. Um, if you've already completed it, it'll ask you when you go to access it if you want to start over or not. Um, and if you if you choose to start over, you'll have to continue through the course. You won't be able to you know skip ahead or anything, but um, you'll definitely have access to it. No no issues there. Awesome. And just as a heads up for those on the phone, if you have any questions throughout. Um, feel free to type them in the chat bar. Great. So what what we're looking to going through right now, we don't want to spend too much time showing you all of all of these different aspects. Um, but what we wanted to you know allow you to go in and, like I said, look around and see um, what would be beneficial. Now the glossary that Joe mentioned, um, one of the things I think he didn't bring up is, those terms that you see there also appear, maybe Joe can find a slide that has some of those terms highlighted on them. And so they're really terms that, um, you know, that aren't uh, common knowledge, like eligibility criteria, for instance, you see there. Well, that's not a commonly used term. And what, what you can do in addition to having the glossary is these, these have been highlighted um, throughout the program and you'll be able to get definitions of uh, what, are, what is otherwise kind of uh, jargon scientific terms. And that, that glossary then um, becomes helpful for, and we've gotten a lot of feedback, the glossary becomes helpful later on. Um, you know, we, we're all, we've all been on calls or, you know, sat in on meetings where people are using terms kind of freely that we, you know, we don't know the definition to. So it's a helpful reference tool to go back to later on. Um, as you're doing other work uh, with fight colorectal cancer and in the advocacy space. Um, so on the on the other side of this, once you are a trained advocate, I will say that um, the needs of uh, advocacy organizations, uh, the pharmaceutical industry, and the Food and Drug Administration for patients to be involved, I can't reiterate enough, is becoming more and more important. And we we're seeing. Uh, advocates out of this program uh, participate in a variety of ways and we're already seeing uh, advocates, patients, caregivers really changing the dynamics of major pharmaceutical companies clinical trial process just by giving their patient input into the process uh, and explaining to these researchers that they themselves uh, may never have been a patient or a caregiver uh, what really matters to patients? What really are difficulties in participating in clinical trials? What are really the, the pain points throughout the treatment process uh, that if they could be uh, better mitigated would, would be helpful to a patient? Um, and, and those patient uh, input aspects are really what's going to not only help expedite uh, the development of new therapies because uh, if, if more patients are participating and rolling, um, the, the frequency um, and, and the ease of accrual to those trials will speed and the FDA approval process will benefit in turn. Uh, we have one question on there. Do you have a page that 
Hold mm -hmm. one second. It, it, that gives all the definitions in the glossary in one place. Yes, uh, we do. Um, so when we send you um, login information for the course, uh, she'll be sending you a file that's basically a series of PDFs that um, each PDF is all the glossary terms that are in each module of the course. So it'll be one page for each of the four modules and it'll have all your glossary terms in there. So yes, you'll be able to access those um, just you know, through your through a PDF, uh, which just makes it easier. Are there any other questions? Now I know we gave you a lot of information today on this, and we really hope you and encourage you to take the course. And like we said, you'll be sent all this information. Um, feel free to to log right in, and even if you don't, you know you're not going to have the time to jump into the course right then. Um, might as well just get started and get your profile created and then come back to the course. Um, you know, obviously you have your strong support system there for colorectal cancer, but we are always here to answer any questions as you go through the module. Um, if you have technical difficulties, uh, feel free to reach out. We have plenty of those um, happen. Um, and if you have any kind of uh, other, other questions regarding the content, and also, as you take the course, we are always open to feedback. This is a uh, online learning platform that was created by patient advocates for patients and patient advocates. So we are open to criticism and uh, suggestions. And as we develop further modules later on, um, what we're seeking to do is as all of our educated advocates, now um, over 250 of them that have gone through this course, we are going to be growing the, the platform and adding uh, modules that expand into uh, other areas that are so important in, in the process. So those will be coming down uh, over the next year. So um, that those are some of the follow through items. Uh, please feel free to, to dive in there and um, we will we'll just say thank you for your time today. I'll turn it back over to Reese uh, for any other item. Thank you both. Um, that was very, very beneficial and helpful. And just a side comment, I um, have started working my way through these portals or through this portal already, and it is um, very straightforward and it's very um, helpful and it, it's, not a, it's not difficult to use, which is very um, nice in this day and age. So if any of you uh, research advocates have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. Um, but it is a very self-guided self-paced um, course that will be very beneficial in the long run. Um, so thank you, Ryan and, and Joe, both of you, for taking the time to go through this and show our advocates um, what it looks like and, and how, to, how to use it. And if any of you have any questions that pop up during, um, feel free to reach out to me. And if I'm not able to answer them, um, I will forward them along to Joe and Ryan. Um, so with that being said, if there's no more questions, which I don't think there are, um, thank you both, and we really appreciate your time for walking us through this. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day, everyone. All right. Thank you all for joining. Bye. 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 Reese? Yes. Hi, Lyra. Hi. Uh, in checking in today... Uh, is there a special place you want us to check in to do our um, curating? Yeah, I will um, follow up with you after after this call. All right. Okay. All right. Bye. Thank you. Bye.